Hey, Sean Clement here, Wisdom in Golf, on location again at the Richmond Hill Golf Club here on the 18th Fairway. We're going to be hammering a point home for you today, a little addendum to our um, uh, kettlebell drill. I've got a four pound hammer here from Home Depot. For those of you who can't get to a sports store, I think this is actually working better for most of our students at the moment. Um, you want a two pound hammer for the gals and juniors, a four pound hammer for most of the guys. Pay really close attention to, though to my instructions because I don't want you guys to get hurt in the process. So here's how we're going to do this. You're going to hold the hammer like you normally hold a golf club, but you notice how I'm aligning the hammer head in the direction of the target. I don't want to do it this way and clip a knee and, <laughs> and ding a kneecap in the process. So again, I'm getting my posture. You notice how bend forward, let the arms hang, really support the weight of the hammer. Now this is the important part. As you swing back and through, do not allow the arms to collapse. Don't let the right arm fold in the backswing. Don't let the left arm fold in the follow through. Don't let the wrists roll over. Arms stay completely straight in the backswing. So you'll notice you have to fully turn to accommodate this. Arms fully straight in the follow through. Notice how I have to fully turn for that as well. In the previous video, we talked about sheet of paper underneath each armpit. This is where you can really feel that crumple zone. No crumple, no crumple, no crash, no crash. So you'll notice as I'm swinging back and through, the weight of the hammer will really slow things down. I get a lot of students that ask me, Sean, how do I slow down my swing? Easy. Be aware of the weight of your arm club unit and use that weight to deliver your action. If you do that, you have to be rhythmic. Your, ta your timing and tempo will start to fall into place. You'll notice that if I try to swing this hammer quickly, I have to use a lot of core muscles to do that. I'm not here for a workout. I'm here to fine tune my golf swing. So out of the way, out of the way, out of the way, out of the way. So I feel like everything's gliding beautifully on top of my hips, you know, pelvis and rib cage. And you'll feel because of the extra weight of the hammer that the weight is going to stay inside the feet. If you let the weight go to the outside of your foot, the hammer will really pull you out of position. So the body responds to the weight. You see how I'm turning out of the way. Watch how bolted my feet are inside left, inside right, inside left. So I'll bring it up the ladder, inside the feet, inside the feet. Got it. You'll notice that to stay inside my feet, my hips are turning under my pelvis and rib cage, which means my knees are rotating, meaning the femurs are rotating. So watch how the femurs rotate, 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 rotate. Rib cage does a full 180, out of the way, out of the way, out of the way, out of the way. Now, if I let this collapse, fold hinge, I'm going to start feeling one hell of a clunk at the bottom of my arc here. Don't want that. That's really going to yank on your shoulder sockets. That's why you don't want the arms to bend with this. So you keep them nicely extended. Now, a fun exercise to do in your backyard, got your hammer, stay away from windows, <laughs> and just heave the hammer a few yards. I would say about 15 paces is enough. So I got my divot right there that I'm going to throw my hammer on. And we're going to do a one, two, three swing. While I'm doing this exercise, I can feel how much momentum I need to get this onto that divot. Here we go. One to the divot. Two to the divot. Three to the divot. Ha! The hammer is touching the divot right now. Do you see how accurate that was? So I am feeling the weight of the hammer and I'm using my genius with gravity to deliver the hammer to the target. Now, with the golf swing, you'll notice the hammer's a lot longer and lighter. That allows you to activate the second pendulum. So, the base of my swing stays the same. So you notice, all the way to waist high, I am fully turned. Notice how the turn happens immediately. So this is really gonna help you with your takeaway and then just fold and hinge in the backswing. So it's out of the way, out of the way, out of the way, out of the way. Now when the second pendulum activates, 
you just allow the weight of the club to hinge your wrists and then it falls. Then you allow the weight of the club to release the wrists over here. So the, the two widest points of the swing are there. Take away, there's your hammer base, fold hinge. Now it's very narrow. Because it's narrow, it allows my body to turn nicely and effectively to deliver me into this position here towards the target. Then the club head releases around the second pendulum, right around the wrists. And it's gravity that deploys that. So the snap of the hands, it's not you manipulating the club to turn over. It's actually the club head that turns you over. Remember that hammer through drill? Let the hammer release. Let the hammer release. So you see how the release occurs way out here. So I allow the weight of the hammer to release me in the direction I want to go. Pick my target again. Left side of the post. Little fade. Feel the weight of the hammer. Do a little takeaway. Yes, that feels like the backswing of my hammer drill. Good. No crumple. Fully turned. So feel the weight. Out of the way. Let it release to my target. Nice fade. There it lands. Good. So you could see how through the ball that was. There's the divot. I allowed the hammer to release me out there towards my target. Everything's good. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you hopefully on the next sunny day.